Uh, thank you so much, Griff, uh, Michael, Riches, for joining. I'm super excited to have this conversation because this is a very, very cool campaign that's happening on Giveth right now uh, in partnership with Optimism. Uh, and before, before mentioning the good news and before starting this conversation, I would introduce myself. My name is Almond. I'm part of the Giveth team. And um, today we are going to talk about the details about this campaign that I already mentioned, in which we are rewarding the first the first 640 verified projects that start receiving donations through Optimism. They will automatically receive 25 OP tokens, and that's really, really great. And with this in mind, we just thought that um, it was a great idea uh, to cover also the Optimism ecosystem and to go deep into the details of what Optimism is about. So that's why we are all here. And to start, please, this is always nice to start with a round of introductions. Um, so what about Breaches? Uh, you were the one jumping in first to the Twitter space. So how about to um, you telling us uh, who are you and what do you do? Thank you, Almond. My name is Bricia, but people in Web3 call me Bridges. I'm co-founder of Ethereum Mexico and I work actually with Riff. I'm part of General Magic and Give It. And now I'm really bullish in Optimus, so that's why I'm here. Nice. Thank you so much, Bridges. And I believe Michael was the second one jumping in. Michael, hello, how are you? All right. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on, guys. I'm really excited um, that Giveth is is joining the Optimism Collective and we can all build beautiful things together and make public goods profitable. And um, as far as me goes, I'm actually, uh, it's cool because I am contributing full-time to Optimism. That's my full-time job. Um, but I'm not actually part of the OP Labs or the foundation. Um, I'm a community member that has basically... I started volunteering for Optimism about a year ago, and over time, I've just gotten more and more involved. Uh, um, right now, some of the main things I'm doing for Optimism are I'm an OP delegate, just like Richie's and Griff. Uh, um, so... You're in good hands with your delegates here. Um, and I served first on as part of one of the committees for the grants program. And then most recently I was on the grants council, which is the community uh, grants program um, run by optimism governance, which is the decentralized community part of governance. And I had the opportunity of meeting Griff and, you know, diving into Giveth and um, how optimism and Giveth are really you know, partner. They were born to be partners together in in both of our um, independent missions. Um, and yeah, in addition to the grants council, I also also run the bi weekly community calls um, uh, for governance. Um, which is just calls that are open to the community, open for anybody to join in who's interested in governance, um, but it's a place for, for delegates and uh, community members can talk about some of the current issues for optimism. And on top of that, my original kind of foray into Web3 and optimism is that I have an educational YouTube channel. So there there are lots of good videos on optimism there, but oh no, I think that we're having some make issues with Michael. I think that I got everything that you said, Michael. It's, it's so great that you started as, as as a contributor with optimism, and now you're a full time. Um, but yeah, your your audio is cutting a little bit. Maybe maybe you can check your connections because we are you're breaking 
And now I cannot hear you at all. So in the meantime that we fix this, let's go with Grief. Grief, how are you? And um, a little introduction and maybe what are you excited the most about this partnership and campaign with Optimism that we're having right now? Well, I am fantastic, and I am super stoked about this uh, a way to onboard new users to Optimism through Giveth, specifically new nonprofits uh, and projects on Giveth. So it's a it's a really cool, beautiful f fusion of like, uh, and that uh, I'm just really bullish on Optimism, as as Breachy said about being a place for public goods uh, groups to really. Uh, congregate and build on and I think uh, bringing in Giveth projects is very on brand and uh, also helps achieve uh, the optimistic vision that uh, they present and and so yeah it's super cool that any project on Giveth can just add an add an uh, optimism address and boom they get a 25 OP uh, that's like $35 so we haven't uh gotten the op yet i think we're still pushing going through the kyc process and all of the all the classic things so we uh, i think it'll take some time before we uh once we get the op then we'll start dishing it out to everybody who has an op address so that's that's uh it's super fun is great i think is really really great maybe all the people that's gathered here already know about optimism or are familiar with the optimism ecosystem but i think that still is very necessary to talk about um or introduce in a sense optimism maybe to talk more about optimism philosophy and why and how are are they supporting public goods? Yes. So I would I would love to start with with that, Michael. Please go ahead. And I think that I hear you better, which is great. Okay. Yeah. So I'm on the Wi-Fi now. Um, if I cut out or something, just hop on and I can try and fix my mic. But does it sound good? Okay. So it sounds fine. perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So I think one thing that in order to understand optimism's philosophy towards public goods, you really have to go back to their origin story. And so some people might not know this, but optimism actually started out as a research focused nonprofit with the goal of scaling Ethereum called Plasma Group. Um, and so Plasma Group was active for about one year um, and they, this is when they released papers on optimistic rollups, um, some other papers on Plasma, and uh, they were basically contributing to the Ethereum ecosystem um, through this research, through this nonprofit. But one thing that they realized towards the end was that as a nonprofit, it's really hard to make an impact when you have to constantly be worrying about um, how you can fund whatever it is that that nonprofit is doing. And so eventually they switched over to being um, the OP Labs that we know today and the Optimistic Foundation. Um, but that DNA of being a public goods focused on profit has remained with them. Um, and with that came the, uh, the, the whole concept of retroactive public goods funding. Okay, I would love to hear about the retroactive public good funding because that actually is the question that I have for you here. But now that you got into it, yeah, I know that's, that's a very important part of optimism. So if you can introduce retroactive uh, public goods funding, please. Yeah, of course. So retroactive public goods funding, it sounds like a big you know, string of words, but if you break it down, um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so it's funding for public goods that happens retroactively. So the general idea is, um, the general goal is to have these kinds of public goods that normally aren't profitable or they're difficult. Um, a public good is anything that, that doesn't have limits on who can use it. So it can be used by everybody in the community. So open source code is a public good. Um, if you think locally, things like libraries and public parks are public goods. Um, and, uh, 
and any any kinds of nonprofits are basically trying to help the world. Um, when you look at how public goods have been traditionally funded, um, they've been funded up front through things like grants and through uh, things like donations. And this isn't a bad thing in itself. Um, like grants are still good. We still have the grants program at Optimism. Um, and obviously donations to causes that you support are also good. Uh, but the thing is, there's a piece of the equation that's kind of missing when this happens is if you think about a lot of crypto, um, crypto economics are these big incentive systems. And one of the beautiful parts about Web3 is that we can build these incentive systems to help us coordinate better and more collaboratively as humans on this planet. And um, if you think about the incentives of getting a grant, uh, the incentive to make a maximum impact with that grant isn't necessarily there. Um, once someone has the, the grant money, um, right, there's nothing on the other end of the grant that would pay them off for making the maximum impact. Now, this is mainly solved by the people who end up getting grants are just really trustworthy, good people. For example, Griff and Breaches, um, if you donate to either of their projects, right, you know, but just based on the reputation, that they're going to do a good job and that they're in this for the right reasons. But in order to scale beyond that, um, or even in, in order to reward these people who are dedicating their lives to these public goods even better, what if you could have a system that rewarded public goods contributors for their actual impact the same way that capitalism rewards for-profit companies for their impact? Um, and so that's where this retroactive public goods part comes in. So the whole idea of um, retro, retro PGF is that impact equals profit. Because we can look retroactively at um, the contributions that project has made, we don't have to judge, you know, uh, we don't have to be that smart about it, right? It's a lot easier to see how impactful something has been than to um, actually predict how impactful something will be. And so um, with this pool of funding that Optimism dedicates to retroactive public goods, uh, there's a vote every, the, the idea is that they're going to have um, increasingly frequent rounds of this retro PGF. And the, the vote um, is where all of the community members, these are badge holders, it's, it's called the Citizens House in Optimism, um, without getting too far into the weeds, but basically there are some respected community members that, um, that have been chosen by the community to vote in this retro PGF process. And then they look back at the projects going backwards um, since the last round of retro PGF at the impact that they've had. Um, and so coming back to incentive systems, what this does is it makes the uh, incentives to make the maximum impact um, possible, to do the most with the least amount of resources. Um, and to actually reward those who are doing good for uh, the collective, for the world, uh, for the Ethereum ecosystem. Um, and so it's basically taking like this one part of about capitalism, which is uh, that actually like kind of works with capitalism is that um, it rewards people who are like uh, efficient with their resources it rewards people that um, work really hard and, and things like that. And it's bringing that to the world of nonprofits and public goods. Nice. Um, now I have it more clear in my head because I know that Giveth was a big uh, part of this retro retroactive public goods funding. And now I understand it Perfectly. I want this conversation to be very dynamic, very fluid. So if Griff or Bridges want to jump in and add something, because I know that you've been uh, playing a big role with the optimism and, and give it relationship, please go ahead. So before I keep going and just ask more of my questions, because I have a lot of questions um, with this uh, regarding this, uh, you both 
have any of you have any comments you want to just add to this? Yeah, maybe maybe I can just add on to like what what uh, Michael is saying about uh, retroactive public goods funding and this this virtuous cycle that it creates. It, it's really this uh, something that we in the Giveth Galaxy have been promoting for a long time. It's this idea that we can actually create economic systems that fund public goods. And here, Optimism has issued a token, given governance rights to that token, and now they're using that token to fund public goods. And no one is paying taxes. No one is donating. Actually, it's just this currency is being issued and it's actually being rewarded to people who are doing good work to make the world a better place. And retroactive public goods funding is like one mechanism of of um, distributing those rewards, which I think is super cool and uh, re- way more reliable in some ways than grants. But, uh, um, and, but the mechanism of of getting the the actual funding uh, right now, it's through the OP token. But maybe I want to like ask Michael: Is there's like some consideration of using, um, you know, sequencer re- um, fees and other gas fees from uh, from like the rollups operation to fund retroactive public goods funding as well? Do you have any? idea of exactly how that would work so this is a good question and this is actually a little bit alpha on the call for everybody because this is something that as a community member i can speak freely about my perspective on the token and how its uses might transition over time whereas i'm not bound by any kind this is all speculation by the way um, but this is just from my understanding of the current ecosystem um so yeah so right now um Optimism is funding the public goods through their initial uh, distribution of tokens from from the launch of their token. Um, Over time, and this is a topic we might get a little bit more into is the OP stack, but other chains that are building using Optimism's open source technology, for example, like Base from Coinbase, a lot of these Coinbase specifically, but a lot of these chains will most likely also be contributing uh, a portion of their transaction fees to this retroactive public goods funding. And so um, obviously the, the base fees won't be in, or the base gas fees won't be in OP, uh, won't be using the OP token for gas, just like Optimism doesn't use the OP token for gas. Um, but a portion of those fees will be used to somehow um, contribute to retroactive public goods funding, whether that's buying the OP token and then and distributing it or actually just distributing in some other token. Um, but you mentioned sequencers. So the one, one of the next big steps for decentralization of optimism and the entire OP stack ecosystem is having decentralized sequencers. And so these decentralized sequencers, um, it would most likely be a network of sequencers that somehow has to achieve consensus on what the next, uh, on which sequencer will sequence like the next set of transactions. And that consensus could be its own system that kind of needs its own economic, um, just like, like Ethereum consensus has staking and things like that. Um, it, there might be something similar w- with uh, the OP stack sequencer consensus that might end up using something like the OP token as a means of coordination between these different decentralized sequencers. So um, over time, like OP, the OP token could transition even beyond uh, just a pure governance token like it is now. Um, but so, so you might have the OP token doing something with the sequencer. Um, that's just an opinion that I have. That's not any kind of inside info or anything like that. Um, and then you will also have all these chains on the OP stack taking a portion of their uh, transaction gas fees and sequencer fees and going back to retro OPGF. And so what you get is this really good cycle, like you were saying, Griff, where the more public goods and the more activity that is happening on optimism, 
um, the more gas fees uh, there are, and the more gas fees that there are from people using the network, the more funding is available um, to go back into these public goods that also in turn help the network grow. So it really is establishing this beautiful positive feedback loop. And the best part of this positive feedback loop is that the things that are being funded are actually good for the world. Um, and so this is, once I kind of grasped this concept of this, this feedback loop, that's when I really started dedicating my time to optimism. Because um, if, you, if you follow this through to the endpoint, if things actually work, obviously there's a lot of challenges um, to overcome, but it, there really is a chance that this could be a completely new paradigm, um, not just in crypto, but a completely new economic system that could be just better for everybody. Now the question is how we integrate AI to all this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. No, I'm kidding. It's no. funny, my, you don't my need to integrate job. AI to, to anything, Michael. Sorry, go ahead. A little background on me. It's my Web2 job was actually working in machine learning. I have a master's in um, machine learning and my first uh, my first technology job was building machine learning algorithms and things like that. So it's funny. It, uh, I haven't seen like any projects personally, I'm going on a tangent now, but that I'm really excited about that combine web three and machine learning, but I'm sure, I'm sure they're going to come eventually. Okay. So like what I was saying is like this stuff about decentralized sequencers is something that I think the collective or the token house has a lot of power on taking decisions. And I think it's really easy to participate in the governance. And I think with OP and with GIF, you can participate in the governance of two amazing groups, to, of two amazing organizations. And that's all what I want to say. Thank you. Thank you, Bridges. And you were talking about actually uh, the similarities between Giveth and, and Optimism. Um, both share this vision of using Web3 technology to empower public goods. These feedback loop that Michael and Griff are mentioning, I think that is a great example of the, of the creativity that you can achieve with Web3 technology and just imagining worlds in which everything is possible, right? To, to make a positive impact. And uh, with this in mind, I would jump I love to jump into the campaign itself. Um, and also maybe it would be good to make a quick restart of this um, give us Twitter space to welcome everyone that just joined. Thank you so much for being here. And we're mentioning and talking about this new campaign between give us an optimism in which we are rewarding the first 640 projects that add optimism to their donation options on Give it. They will receive 25 OP tokens. And this is super, super simple. Um, on Give it, you can now receive donations to Polygon, Zello, Optimism, Mainnet, for sure, Gnosis. Uh, and it's a matter of you changing and going to your um, profile, to your project profile, and then you will see the option of adding optimism. And if you're a new project, it's very, very easy as well when you're setting your project uh, down the last options uh, mentioned to add optimism, to receive optimism with the same wallet address, or you can add a separate wallet address to start receiving donations on optimism. Optimism, Sorry. So um, with this in mind, I would love just to talk about this. How how would you say maybe give us projects could um, get advantage or take advantage of this opportunity? Of course, uh, besides this 25 OP. So... Um, I don't know, uh, maybe uh, Bridges were saying that it would be nice for projects also to jump into the optimism ecosystem regarding their governance, or what other things would you say that projects could really, really take advantage of this opportunity with Give It an Optimism? In Optimism, there is a lot of discussions now about having a smaller delegates. Like, sometimes there is, like, huge delegates with a lot of uh, power vote. But they are talking about like what they can do to have a smaller. And I think 
will be really interesting if, for example, these projects that are receiving the 25 OP start participating in Optimus with that small butter, like boat power. But I think it will be really interesting how, how can it go. I don't know if you want to add something, Rip or Michael. Can you, can you hear breaches now, Michael? I can. The problem is fixed. And I'm glad it wasn't my fault. It was Twitter's fault. But everything seems good. <laughs> Thanks. I guess I, I guess this is what happens when you fire ninety percent of your engineers or something like that, right? Uh, you end up with some bugs. Uh, but yeah, uh, I think I think what you said is is very true, Richie. That one way to get involved is like uh, you can start being a delegate in in Optimism and actually start participating in Web three governments governance. And this is one of the, the things that Giveth is really excited about is is just kind of. Getting getting the nonprofits that are you know uh, you know really doing good work on the ground, but getting them to dip their toes into the Web three space and be part of be part of what we're building here, you know, and and learn uh, learn governance. And so, if you're a, a nonprofit on Give It, then you want to play around. Becoming a delegate on Optimism is one op is one opportunity to really dive in. Another opportunity could also be to uh just like start investing some of your donations on uh, into DeFi. optimism is having like insane rewards like they are giving out so many uh various uh so much op to so many different DeFi groups that are doing yield farming where you can just like i mean i think i saw on beefy the other day you can just hold ether in in one of their uh one of the like a urine vault and then they're giving out op rewards and uh and the rewards are really high like 10 percent on ether and and eight or nine percent on stable tokens and it's just like wow well that's like you know a real win-win where you as a nonprofit, you start to play with DeFi and earning some interest of course you're taking smart contract risk you know there's always there's no free lunch here there is risk but uh if you if you take some of your donations and and you want to earn uh some interest on holding them i mean why not uh right so and optimism is one of the best places to do that and now you so now you can collect you know donations straight on optimism and actually earn a yield on them uh in op tokens which then you can use to come in the protocol or just sell to fuel your uh to actually help fuel your nonprofit, so yeah, I, I think there's lots of cool things you can do with OP, and and I'm just really happy. Give it can be the gateway for that. And actually, I want to add that if you don't want to get into risk with your tokens in Optimism, you can donate on Give it. So you can donate Ether, OP, Dai. You can donate Synthetics, Link. So. If you don't want to get the risk, you can donate too and receive give backs. I'm participating in the governance of give it too. I think that that is a great option too. Nice. Thank you for also adding some benefits of being part of the give it ecosystem too, but it is, <laughs> we, I think that that's more of a complete answer right there. Michael, do you have any more ideas of, of how actually uh, give us projects could be joining the optimism ecosystem uh, besides participating in the governance or maybe start investing some of the donations into DeFi or getting give backs. Yeah, I mean, I think they did a pretty good job of, of covering a lot of those. I'm in full agreement um, with what Beaches and Griff said. I think just seconding the idea of getting involved in optimism governance. If you look at the trajectory of optimism, um, the idea is with, with some new technology uh, improvements that are coming out, the fees are going to be really, really low in the amount of potential users and applications um, on Optimism are, are just going to be there for billions of people. And so a lot of these nonprofits that I see on Giveth, they're doing really good things in the world. And I think that maybe with with all of these different projects, there are ways that they could improve the processes of what they're doing um, by finding some ways to use optimism, whether that's, um, you know, sending funds around. I mean, obviously, Giveth is a number one use case, right? Um, but then 
as new applications come into the ecosystem, as fees get cheaper, as more and more people all over the world are online using Optimism, I think there's a lot of opportunity to make an impact um, using that as a tool. Nice. Thank you. Um, it's worth to mention that these projects that are going to be receiving the OP tokens need, need to be verified verified projects on Giveth, um, which means that you need to have a reputation and you need to go and uh, submit our, your verified um, batch in order to, to, to get it and then be part of these 640 projects that are going to be receiving 25 OP tokens. And I imagine a lot of possibilities with with Giveth and Optimism working together, I think that uh, Giveth being part of the retroactive public goods funding and now also uh, making this campaign together is just a starting point of all the possibilities that these um, two projects, these two communities, uh, could could really, really, really ambition. So, Griff, uh, Michael, Bridges, do you have some thoughts of what could these two really great projects from the Web3 space could do together, could achieve together, just to set the the, the floor on, of some things that could be the future of this collaboration? Well, one thing we have planned already uh, as part of this grant, actually, is to deploy our token on Optimism and uh, and actually start giving rewards in Optimism. So when I, I believe we will have that out next week the rewards part uh where uh next week or the week after uh you know dev devin is devin so some things take longer than you think with bugs and testing but uh uh when people donate on optimism they will get give tokens on optimism which is the first um chain besides the chains we launched with which is made net ethereum and gnosis chain to actually uh, start re receiving rewards in, uh, on that chain. So that's super fun. And also we're going to enable voting on Optimism and staking on Optimism. So when uh, when you receive those give tokens on Optimism, you won't have to bridge them anywhere to participate with Giveth Governance. You'll be able to stake them and actually earn a reward for participating in Governance. Uh, in give tokens, so you just be able to stake and lock your give tokens, and uh, with that staked voting power, you'll be able to actually decide the order uh, that projects come up on give it. Uh, we call this our give power system, so you can boost your favorite nonprofits on give it, whether they have an optimism address or not. You can boost any project on give it, and uh, that actually not only does it change the order. Uh, but it also, uh, uh, the order that they show up on, on Giveth, but it also changes how much givebacks each project gets. So the top project on Giveth gets 80% givebacks, and if a project doesn't have any um, boost, then it gets 50% uh, givebacks according to our current setup. Uh, and of course, that can change if give token holders can change that dynamic. But uh, it, uh, and so, every project that has a boost gets somewhere in between that 80% and 50%. So that power will be given to uh, uh, token holders on Optimism, which is super cool. And I think in the future, honestly, there's a lot of crossover uh, that I want to do with uh, with Optimism that's not especially, uh, not, not so much exactly with give it but with a lot of our sub projects like uh i'm excited to see if we can move the token engineering commons over to optimism uh they're interested in it and it, it uh we're currently on gnosis chain and i think that there's just a huge value alignment between token engineering research and uh public goods in the token engineering space and of course optimism uh so that's one thing that's in in that we're looking at putting together and writing a, a grant for actually another project that we're looking at putting together is actually launching uh aragon DAOs on optimism so bringing aragon os over uh we can work with blossom labs and common stack to to do that work and uh and that way we can deploy well one of the projects that i one of the things that i think is really critical for 
um, you know, this change that we want to see where we can launch economies uh, around public goods. Uh, we want to uh, basically deploy the Aragon OS, like the old Aragon clients that uh, thousands of DAOs are using and deploy that on Optimism so that we can launch augmented bonding curves on op Optimism, which is uh, kind of the common stack's flagship product, uh, as well as DAO voting, which is like a, an, another form of uh, voting on Optimism that would be super cool that, that uses Aragon. So we're looking at putting together a grant for that as well. Uh, and honestly, I'm really excited about gas controls. So one thing that we did with the token engineering commons and the common stack is we had this, uh, well, we're starting to call it party economics. Before we were calling it collaborative economics, where uh, people would come to param parties and actually parameterize the augmented bonding curve. So the community got to decide the economics of the bonding curve. It wasn't just like a couple of devs behind the scenes who who say how things are going to be and then the community votes yes or no. Actually, if the, those developers are on the same page as the random geologist that happens to be in the Discord and anyone can submit economic parameters uh, and, and actually propose how uh, the economy should be set up. And so we did these param parties and param debates, and we had uh, quadratic vote, quadratic um, votes, and uh, quadratic ranked choice voting uh, to decide the actual parameterization of the token engineering commons bonding curve. And I would love to do a similar process for the for and, and uh, build on top of Bedrock to help the community allocate these these gas funds that uh, that Michael was bringing before, uh, where we can do like party economics. We can throw parties, put on music, show people, build a dashboard so people can understand uh, what parameters they can choose and make it easy for them to actually submit parameters and make it easy for them to debate parameters of how do we allocate the gas, how do, how do we decide how much gas to charge on Optimism? How do we allocate those funds? Do we buy OP? Do we not buy OP? How do we distribute the OP? Like all of these questions could actually be answered by the community using this process. And I would love to uh, work with the Optimism community to, to actually uh, repeat what our success with the token engineering comments with optimism around uh, determining how to use gas money. So, yeah, and, and I think there's even a few other projects that are in the works that I've heard about, uh, but uh, those are the big ones I see. And, yeah, I don't know. What do you think about that, Michael? Does any of that sound interesting? It sounds incredibly interesting. I mean, just... Like, we haven't even really gotten into Bedrock and the OP stack and things like that. But the beautiful thing about... Um, so the OP stack is the... Just to give a very quick background. The OP stack is all the different layers of technology that make up a blockchain. And so Optimism has actually open sourced the OP stack. And so that includes the, you know, the sequencing layer, the execution layer... Um, you know, the the derivation layer, bringing data back from L1. Um, and so all of these things with the Token Engineering Academy, like, yeah, like that, that would be awesome to have them kind of thinking about these and contributing to the OP stack. Um, so yeah, I have, to, I have to admit, I think I might have to do a little bit of research on augmented bonding curves or whatever that was, because uh, I don't know off the top of my head what that means. Um, but but it sounds awesome. Uh, just having having those projects kind of coming and being part of the, the optimism community, and yeah, it it sounds great. I think that for me, I, the only person that I get excited to 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 listen to to these things that are very DeFi, very technical, very crypto griff. Really, I I I get very excited when when um, he explained. Things like this, because is uh, is yeah, just again imagine all the possibilities that 
we can do together and contribute together with the experience that um, we all have right through the through the ecosystem. So, Bridges, do you have something to add regarding this collaboration with Optimism? And and give it. I know that Griff mentioned other things like the token engineering conference and stuff. Maybe you have something specifically about give it. Yeah, I think in general, like for say something like in public goods, there is no competition, only collaboration. So I recommend you to check the forum and the Discord. There is good opportunities if you are working on technical decentralization, if you have an educative platform, or you organize hackathons. There is opportunities for you. If you are creating a novel application for Optimist, there is opportunities for you. So put attention there because I think it, it will be a reign of Optimist in all these projects that are building around public goods. And also, I, I really love the branding. I know I don't know you guys, but for me, just Optimism as uh, a great branding around it uh, is very remarkable. It's very easy to... To remember, so I think that it's also also um, a great thing to take advantage of. And yeah, quick reminder again, the intention of this Twitter space was actually to invite you all, if you're not in Giveth, this is a great opportunity to submit a project. You can submit a project um, about everything. It can be a personal project, but just have in mind that uh, personal projects cannot be verified. But you can submit a project that supports public goods like the Give and Optimism missions. Um, you you can submit a project of whatever. It does not have to be Web3 specifically. We have tons of projects from all around the world uh, that work towards education, towards poverty, towards earth regeneration. So go go into Give it, recommend your friends to uh, submit a project on Giveth if they haven't already and just share with them this really great opportunity in which the first 640 projects to add optimism as a donation option will receive 25 OP tokens that Griff you mentioned it was like $30 right? Around. Yeah today it's about 30 it's more than $35 so uh, less than 40 somewhere in between there which is super cool and and uh, one thing just to clarify is that personal projects if it's a personal project of like uh, like there was a project that raised over a hundred thousand uh, dollars that was run by this guy and his daughter where they were just feeding the homeless in a in a city in Canada you know and that's the kind of uh, that kind of personal project can be verified uh, but uh, sadly, well, not sadly, I mean, our goal with Giveth is to uh, support um, projects that are funding public goods. And so, like, for instance, if your son has leukemia and you're trying to raise money for his uh, health care, well, unfortunately, we don't verify those kinds of projects, but it, we would verify because it's, like, just benefiting one person, even though it's a uh, good cause, and we have lots of lots of really great projects like that on Giveit. You're allowed to. You definitely can uh, put your project up there and like raise funds. We just wouldn't subsidize the donations with our gift token. We, but if you had a, a leukemia, like a children's leukemia project that like helps various children that have leukemia and gives them a discount on or like subsidizes their health care costs and 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 that kind of thing then that would of course be get verified and and all that and we're very diligent with our verification process i think it's one of the things that sets us apart in the space is we're not trying to do any kind of crazy decentralization thing we just actually have a verification team look at every project dig in and make sure that they are a good project that is providing a public good. They're not, uh, in that they're not some kind of scam project. They have a history of success. And uh, those are the only projects that get verified on Give It. And uh, yeah, I think it's something that sets us apart uh, from in the space. Well, you know, if you're donating to a verified project, money's going to a good place. And for clarifying that, go ahead, Richie. Sorry. I want to add that if you don't have a project on Give It, like this is the moment. Like you can receive OP, and the experience for the user is really good. It's really easy, but it's really fast. 
So I recommend you to do to do that. Thank you, thank you, Bridges, and thank you, Grief. Um, yeah, I think that our verification team does a great, great work just making sure um, to to really have projects in our give back give backs program that, as Griff mentioned, would now be possible through optimism as well. Uh, and yeah, I, I just want to add the give it has a great depth team that makes all these things possible. So, um, Michael, yeah, go ahead. I just wanted to add, yeah, I mean, for any project that is is using give it, get on optimism, get your free OP. And then also think about the optimism community, because um, the optimism community is a place where people are already motivated to fund public goods and to fund projects like yours. And so think about, you know, thinking, go about going to optimism events or um, and, and advertising your project to the community, because this really is a whole group of like minded individuals that want to help the world, that want to make the world a better place. And so I really think um, beyond just, you know, um, just having it as another chain where you're accepting donations, think about it as a community where you can, you know, pull supporters from, because we really are here for um, the same reasons. And I think that's why it's such a beautiful partnership between Giveth and Optimism. And you can you can see with the retroactive public goods funding that Giveth received that the Optimism community loves Giveth and loves the, the projects that they're supporting. Um, so so don't be a stranger. <laughs> uh, I think that's that's really really great. We should just um, organize another Twitter space to talk about retroactive public goods funding and I think that I will just love to organize a bunch of other Twitter spaces with with the Optimism uh, team to actually introduce you guys to more projects to to more of the Giveth community to get to know you and and to start participating in the great system that Optimism and, and Giveth to are. So um, I think that we're ready to wrap this up just uh jump into our, our twitter we have a lot of tweets explaining this new campaign we have some images that explain how to add optimism into your donation options and yeah i would love just to give you guys uh the word to add something if you want to invite people to something or just to make a final thought out and to put a final thought out there, please go ahead, Michael. Maybe we can start with you. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you um, for for hosting and for all the work that you guys are all doing with Give It and all the other projects. Um, I am super excited to have Give It on Optimism and having worked with Griff and and Breaches too in the community calls. I mean, these are great people that are really making this community better. Um, and so I'm just super excited to be here. I'm super excited that we're all here together. Um, and I'd say to everybody listening, uh, check out the Optimism Discord. Check out how you can get involved. If you get stuck on anything, just reach out. My DMs are open. And so if anybody has any questions about optimism or are thinking about building a project that are using that's using optimism, uh, feel free to, to reach out and I'll um, do my best to, to get you started in the right direction. Um, but really, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me on. And I'm really excited to see how Giveth and Optimism can collaborate in the future. Nice. Thank you so much, Michael. Hope to have you in more Twitter spaces in the future. But is anything else that you want to add? Some final words? I want to say thank you for inviting me. I really admire you guys. Like, if someone add value to the collective, it's Michael. So it's great to have him here. And yeah, even like, I don't know, like with this gas apocalypse that we, <laughs> that we had last week, I think even as a user, like think about optimism, you know, it's really cheap and you can support public goods while you are using normal like, trans with transactions. So I recommend you to, to play with it. And I will pass it to you, Griff. 
Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I, well, first off, I want to give a shout out to all these awesome friends that are here. I see Jose with the giver, like, or Jose, man, so cool. Uh, I, I think we're the, the, the two that are holding strong with the giver PFP, uh, so that's awesome. And uh, I see Ann Brody and Roek and, and Lumco and Yazdani, like some really good friends here checking us out. Uh, so thank you all for coming. Oh, helpers, we were chatting the other day uh, on Twitter too. Uh, so yeah, it's cool to see all you guys here, and it's really awesome uh, to to chat about this opportunity. So just all you got to do is you've got to go to Giveth. If you already have a project there, uh, you can go to uh, your projects page, like your profile, and there'll be a little uh, link that says manage addresses. You click the manage, and I'm pretty sure we have a tweet thread about this that shows exactly how to do it. You click manage addresses, and if you have the same address on two other networks, it will autofill. You don't even have to copy paste your address in. It will autofill your other address there, assuming it's a key or, or a multi-sig that you know how to redeploy uh, to keep the same address. And boom, you click add address, and w once we get the OP from Optimism Foundation, we will send you 25 OP as an instant donation. Just for adding that address, and we made like a super slick UI to do it. Uh, so definitely consider it's like a couple of clicks. Uh, best hourly rate you're going to get, uh, it, it, as, as, far as, I can, as far as I know, it's like it'll probably take you 30 seconds to get 35 bucks. So uh it's pretty that's pretty good i i would consider i would definitely check that out make sure to get that done and only the first 640 projects do it and we have 1800 projects so uh you know make that happen fast uh although i i do think that you'll probably be okay if it doesn't happen today <laughs> just so you know uh and then i know we only have like four minutes left but if if I see a lot of thumbs up, I, I, Michael was asking about augmented bonding curve. I think I could give a three minute primer to the augmented bonding curve. If, I if think that's ready. perfect. Yeah, actually, I I was going to suggest to you to do that when Michael mentioned it, but then I forgot because my memory is really bad. I'm sorry, but yeah, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. So, so, okay. So I'll and I'll keep it short because I'm sure everyone has another call after this, but. Uh, the augmented bonding curve is what will allow economic startups. So Optimism launched a token, and now with that token issuance, they are providing, they're rewarding people who are providing value for society, right? Because they were big enough to actually create liquidity for this OP token as an investment. And that investment use case of OP, whether they say it or not, uh, this is what ensures demand for the OP token so that the retroactive uh, rewards actually mean something, right? So when Given gets a bunch of OP uh, for all the work that they've we've done in the uh, in in the Ethereum ecosystem, we can actually sell it and fund our uh, and and fund our continued development. And it's and on top of that, there's a healthy market uh, for OP tokens. But this is only possible because the OP token has is such a huge thing. Right, and they started as a startup and got investment and seed funding from uh, from investors, you know, and using traditional means. The augmented bonding curve solves this liquidity problem for our economy, so that they don't have to go talk to VCs and and do that investment. That like actually, their community of enthusiasts about this the public good that they're creating can actually gather together, put money in a pot. And all become kind of like a like like a party round is what they call it in the VC space for a project, but all on chain. And so you can collect a bunch of money in a hatch and initialize a, a, a micro economy where the liquidity is provided by the augmented bonding curve. So the magic of a bonding curve and and bonding curves, not the augmented bonding curve. I mean, maybe, but I doubt it. Now, bonding curves themselves will win a Nobel Prize in economics because they are solving this liquidity problem and addressing and creating the world's first open, public, uh, single-sided market. So when you want to buy Amazon stock, you have to. Someone else has to sell you Amazon stock. You want to buy Bitcoin, someone needs to sell you Bitcoin. You want to. You want to sell a chair, someone's got to buy your chair, right? But with a bonding curve, if you want to buy the token in the bonding curve, uh, 
Uh, you go to the bonding curve, you send it money, the bonding curve holds the money, and it issues you a new token that never existed before. It issues you the token. And in that way, you're not interacting with another person. You're buying a token and it's created for you. And if you want to sell that token, then you send it to the bonding curve and the bonding curve destroys it. In this way, you've cr we've created in crypto a, the fir world's first single-sided market. It's never existed before. And this can solve the liquidity issues of a small market cap token, specifically tokens that are trying to be <laughs> tokenized nonprofits, economies that want to do the same thing as optimism, reward public goods funding, uh, but they're not so massive where they have their own roll-up and, you know, their founders are buddy-buddy with Vitalik. You know, it's like, no, they actually just want to clean up a river uh, in, in their town. So, like, uh, they need, if they want to create an economy around cleaning up a river, they need to solve this liquidity problem, and the augmented bonding curve solves it. And uh, to, uh, just, just to, it, it's only been implemented once by the token engineering commons, and in this bear market, with the augmented bonding curve support, the token engineering commons, who all they do is give out donations. That's all they do. They give out grants. They ran a, a quadratic funding round recently uh, in this last beta round Bitcoin uh, using money they raised during their hash. That's all they do. And yet the token actually is worth just as much as Ethereum. If you bought Ethereum at the, in the crowd sale of the TC and you bought TC tokens, they're worth the same amount. You have the same amount of money either on either side. So I don't know another small market cap token that has kept pace with Ethereum's price during this bear market. And the TC did that with the augmented bonding curve. So I'm really bullish on the, on this technology and I'm really excited to uh, try to bring it to Ethereum. But, uh, to optimism, I mean. But uh, that's, so that's the primer. I'm over time. Uh, thank you guys for letting me rant though. Awesome. That was, that was thank you so like much. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I don't know you guys, but I think that having just this, this time with, with someone like Griff explaining these things do not happen very often. So thank you. Thank you so much, Griff. And thank you also to Teo that is saying hi. Also to Profit Reward Foundation, it's saying this is a great initiative. To Lunco, it says it's crazy giving money for an action that helps you to get more donations. Crazy. So thank you, you all, for your comments. I'm, I'm glad that you're excited as us for for this to to happen. So please, please spread the word. The word. Tell everyone about this, and let's make a huge movement of people getting into giveth, getting their. OP tokens. So, Grief, Michael, Richies, thank you and thank you everyone for joining and see you very, very soon.